My name's David Eden Sangwell, and on this week's BartenderHQ.com podcast, we are talking about the Monkey Shoulder Ultimate Bartender Challenge and the importance of preparation. Welcome to the BartenderHQ.com podcast. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at BartenderHQ. Here's your host, David Scooby Sangwell. So thank you very much for joining me again. Uh, This week's BartenderHQ.com podcast, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to be talking a lot about the Monkey Shoulder Ultimate Bartender Challenge. Now, I was uh, an entrant in this about a week ago uh, here in Birmingham. Um, Some brilliant bartenders there, and it uh, it was a superb day. Brilliant to see everyone again. Great to see Grant Neve. We've interviewed a little while back on the podcast already. Uh, That was when we went to the Aerodynamic Party. Um, And if you're aware, we have also been recently, before the wedding, we went over to, uh, to London and we picked up one of those Monkey Shoulder Conga Shakers. So we'll have a quick look at that as well. Uh, There is an unboxing video already on the BartenderHQ.com website, so uh, take a good look at that. The Ultimate Bartender Championships uh, from Monkey Shoulder last year was a team competition, and uh, my good friend Sam Bolton actually made the the very finals of that uh, with his team from Newcastle, I believe. And the winning team last year got a pop-up bar at London Cocktail Week. Uh, Monkey Shoulder and the team uh, kind of stocked it all for them, and they got to keep all the revenue from it which was a pretty cracking prize um so this year it, they, they've changed it up a little bit it's become an individual competition and if you've not um not seen the monkey shoulder ultimate bartender championship stuff in the past basically the way it works is it's testing the skills that pay the bills so uh, this is not a bartending competition in the in the kind of traditional sense of you turn up, you've got a prepared drink and a spiel, and, and you kind of do your your stuff like we did basically with the Sue's competition and Susan Beer, uh, which was featured on last week's podcast. If you want to know about a mixology competition, go and have a quick look at that one. Um, but the monkey shoulder, the way that it works is they're testing a full range of the bartender's skills and bar manager's skills as well. So not only are we looking at pouring accuracy from the bartenders, we're also looking at things like nosing spirits. So if you, uh, for, for this competition, for example, we had 10 glasses put in front of us, all black glasses, blacked out with lids on, and we had to nose them just from the aroma, tell what the... Uh, what the spirit was or what the liqueur was and then what the brand was as well to get full points. Uh, There was a stock taking round so we got 10 bottles with a a limited amount of time uh, to read how much stock's in the bottles and then take the cost price of those bottles, work out the stock on hand value, uh, the retail value of the stock, all that kind of thing. Um, And under pressure that's really kind of fun to do. Uh, There were two quiz rounds so you got a, a 100 question quiz uh, which was really quick fire. I've posted actually a, a video, um, only about a 15 seconds or something, but it shows just how quickly they get through these uh, multiple choice questions. 100 questions, I think we went through in about 15 or so minutes. It felt really, really fast. Uh, that was followed with a mixologic table round, and, and for this, I'll put it up on the screen as well, but we were essentially given a... Uh, a mix, uh, a periodic table of elements, but all with mixology stuff in there. So liqueurs, spirits, garnishes, procedures, and then we were given a list of ten formulas that we had to translate into cocktails. And that's really hard as well when you're under pressure. And and obviously the the fact that different places use slightly different recipes for things doesn't help. But these were pretty much the classics uh, that you'd expect. Uh, so that was really cool. And then what were the other two rounds? We had a tray service round. Uh, so the bartenders would have to grab themselves a uh, a tray, go over to a table. You've got 10 coasters on that table, five blue, five pink, with pictures of celebrities on there. And you basically had to run around that table, grab the um, the order from everyone on the table. And to do that, the, the drinks were written on the reverse side of each of these uh, these drinks coasters. You need to take the order, ladies first, clockwise, and then the gentleman, then run back to the bar, give them your uh, your order. Then you were going back to the bar, to, uh, back to the table to deliver those drinks without turning the uh, coasters back over. So really cool, um, testing another one of those skills. 
and uh, and then the the top guys that got through basically the top three bartenders went on to a round building round so uh, essentially you were given uh, eight recipes uh, five minutes to make your drinks and uh, yeah so basically these recipes were released to the bartending community ahead of time so everyone had time to prepare and know exactly what the drinks were and this is where the uh, the beauty of being well prepared comes in so if for example like me you don't expect to hit that top three uh, position and then all of a sudden you come third you haven't memorized these drinks you don't know what the drinks are and you're trying to do a speed round from a piece of paper somehow quite miraculously I managed to uh, bunny hop over somebody and come in second overall after this, even though I didn't complete all the drinks. Um, but obviously, my time for the drinks that I did complete, uh, plus the penalties, ended up being slightly better. So I actually took a second place in this competition. So fantastic! Uh, always love to place in these things. And the guys from Monkey Shoulder, you did an amazing job on the day. Um, the other competitors, Sam Bolton, who, uh, as I say, was a third place, he was in the third place team uh, last year at the Monkey Shoulder Ultimate Bartender Championships. He, he actually won overall for the day uh, with an absolutely superb speed round, so uh, you will be able to check that out. Uh, I'll put a little clip up uh, right here and you'll be able to watch that. Um, but yeah, uh, Sam did a, a, an amazing job. And this week, I'm actually heading out with Sam to a Paluga uh, event uh, this Sunday. So actually, the day that this goes live, I'll be off to Nottingham to uh, to take part in this Paluga event. It's an education thing, plus a little mixology thing at the end of it, a bit of a competition. Uh, I may be helping out with some judging if he's not been able to, uh, to fill those gaps. Um, so that's really fun as well. So this Wednesday night, I was lucky enough to be invited down to BL1 in Birmingham for their VIP opening night. Um, they opened to the public Thursday night. I was down there on Wednesday night. Uh, met up with a, a whole bunch of their team. Had a good chat with uh, Lee Miller, one of the one of the founders. Uh, if you've not heard of Beat One um, and you're in the UK, you really should have done. Uh, they've now got 30 bars. They turned 18 this week. But it all started when three Fridays bartenders got themselves car loans and set up their first bar I believe in Battersea Rise in London um, and going on from there I believe they've now got 19 bars uh, in London alone uh, they've got a bar in Manchester they've got a whole bunch all the way across the UK um, Birmingham opens this week so if you're in the area I do encourage you to get down there have a few drinks um, the drinks that I had on the night were absolutely superb. So uh, let's just whip through those really quickly. I tried the uh, gin refashioned, um, which is essentially a an old fashioned made with uh, Sipsmith's VJOP uh, gin, which is uh, very juniper heavy. Really, really beautiful with a nice dried orange wheel on the side. Um, absolutely superb drink. Very much enjoyed that. Uh, I was given a regular old fashioned as well, and uh, also a Ramos Gin Fizz. And now I thought it was very mean of uh, the guy I was there with to order Ramos Gin Fizzes on a night like that when the guys were pretty busy. Um, but no, they are. Uh, they have their techniques. They can make them nice and quickly. So if you want a Ramos Gin Fizz, and it was really, really, really nice and foamy, absolutely beautiful drinks. Get down to Beat One in Birmingham or your nearest Beat One because they are really, really good bars, uh, really interesting drinks. They've got a great menu. And I know it started off as kind of a big kind of Friday style experience. It's evolved so far since then. Their bartenders go through a huge training process, very much like Fridays, but obviously on their drinks and their own standards and all that kind of thing. Um, so I cannot encourage you enough to go in, out and check your nearest be at one venue i've got a feeling they're going to be opening an awful lot more in the very near future as well now you may have seen we got featured on nightclub and bars website um on the top seven hospitality uh podcasts which was an absolute honor um, we were up there with People like Steve Schneider and the Schneider Show podcast, uh, the guys over at A Bar Above, um, Brian Weber at uh, the Bartender Journey podcast, the Road Rash guys, uh, that's with uh, Russell Davis and Chef Brian Duffy, who've both featured on Bar Rescue in the States. Um, and obviously, if you've seen in the past, we had uh, we had Russell actually as a guest on the show, absolutely superb guest, 
delight to talk to. One of the nicest guys probably in the whole industry. Um, so check that out. And it's an absolute honor to get onto a list like this on something like Nightclub and Bar's website. And that it's kind of getting more recognized now. So what I would also say is if you're in a kind of, if you're in a, a new market, an emerging market, um, I know we have a lot of uh, Indian um, fans for the website and for the Facebook page and you guys are always chatting to me I want to hear what what goes on in your bars so whether you want to get in touch with the show directly drop me an email drop as a message through the Facebook page or even get yourselves out there and, and create a podcast like this it's not a massive undertaking it's not a huge thing we shoot this on an iPhone this is not some huge production number we've not got a, a crew it's me it's me with an iPhone and a couple of lights. Um, and that's all we've got. Do you know what I mean? So there's no reason that you guys can't be doing this. And a few resources if you want to do it yourself. Um, get yourself a website set up. You can do it free with uh, WordPress or someone like that. No problems at all. Um, anyone in the world can pretty much host videos on YouTube for free. Why not? Get on with it. If you want to do an audio-only podcast, you can do that as well. It tends You tend to actually have to pay you to host that, which is a little bit weird when you can host video for free, but that's what it is. Um, so that's the kind of, the only real expense that we have for the for the show is is actually um, hosting the audio podcasts. Um, and if, of course, you want to support the show in any way, uh, I've got an ebook out there that you can pick up and it will help you to memorize cocktails really, really quickly and without all of the pain that you would normally go through trying to memorize 100, 120, 200 drinks, which you might be having to do if you've got a new menu being rolled out or if you're starting off in bartending and you've got all those classics to learn, then, you know, it's kind of overwhelming and this book really breaks it down into steps and uh, and just throws out like half the information that you would normally have to learn. So uh, I do encourage you to pick that up if you want to support the show, if you want to help us out and keep the bartenderhq.com podcast going. But on that subject, if you are interested, I do recommend a couple of other podcasts to check out. So um, the main one that I uh, listen to is uh, Pat Flynn. Uh, it's a guy that does the Smart Passive Income podcast. And his website has got a whole bunch of resources on how to set up your podcast easily uh, without all the headaches uh, that you will get if you try and do it without any advice. So I do recommend checking out Pat's podcast. And the other one is my good friend Ozeal over in the US who uh, runs a podcast called No Permission Needed. And it's all about motivating yourself and some of the techniques that you can use if you want to start an online business or a blog or you just want to help people. Uh, which is really the reason that we do Bartender HQ. It's to help you guys. And if we're not helping you, please tell me so that you, you can tell me what you need. And that is what it all comes down to at the end of the day. We want to help other bartenders like yourselves. And if you've got something, if you want to talk about what the bar scene is like in your country, if you want to tell me what the bar scene is like uh, in a cool bar that you've been to, just drop me an email, david at bartenderhq.com. And we'll either get you on the show, or we'll have a chat on Skype, or we'll, yeah, we'll just we'll just chat. I'm a guy. Let's uh, let's talk. So I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. Uh, I've got a lot to do, um, but do look out for next week's podcast. We're going to be talking a lot about uh, Peluga. Uh, if you've never heard of it, uh, do pop online and Google it. It is essentially the forerunner of vodka. So it's it's basically what vodka was like before it was really vodka. So. It's, it's uh, known as a bread wine. Um, really, really interesting. It's very, very different. They've got some great infusions, and we're going to do a little bit of a tasting, and you guys can taste along with us. So, until next time, guys, I've been David Eden Sangwell for the bartenderhq.com podcast. Shoot over to our website, pick up the ebooks if you want to support us. I'd absolutely love it if you did. And sign up for our mailing list, and you'll get all sorts of little goodness into your inbox see you next time if you like this video click like if you disliked it click dislike let me know in the comments if there's something else you want me to talk about and thank you for watching please subscribe if you haven't already so that you will get notified every time we release something new